Based on your latest report, the Fed's interest rate cut is projected to occur at the end of July, though inflation has not yet met the target in 2%. What are the risks? So one thing I'd like to highlight first up is Moody's Analytics uh, does expect that the first rate cut will come in September. So we still have a few more months to go until we do expect to see the Fed actually deliver that 25 basis point reduction. I think what's really critical and what's uh, keeping the Fed from cutting rates sooner is the fact that inflation has taken longer to cool than expected. And what we've seen as a result of that is, you know, the labor market, it's holding much more resilient than what we expected and what more broadly what markets expected. So overall this year, we're only expecting a cumulative 50 basis points worth of cuts this year. So, um, you know, unfortunately, that, that high interest rate environment is going to hang around in the U.S. a lot longer than what was expected. We still find it slightly more optimistic during the volatility that we saw from the early 2024. Do you think there will be another level of equilibrium and the inflation target of the Fed in 2% is no longer relevant? That's a good question. And I think what's important to appreciate first up is, of course, that the Fed is targeting 2% over the long run. And what's happened over the past couple of years is this exceptional confluence of factors that we just couldn't have predicted. I mean, first up, it was the pandemic that led to a plethora of supply chain challenges. And then we had Russia's invasion of Ukraine and an associated energy price shock as a result as well. And that led to inflation just, you know, accelerating beyond expectations. And that led, you know, central banks to aggressively come off the sidelines. And now, you know, conditions are somewhat normalizing. We have seen an entrenched disinflation trend really come. And our expectation remains that, you know, inflation over the long term and over the medium term as well will actually return to 2% in the US. So there's no need to be adjusting targets at this point. And I think, you know, keeping that 2% target is really important to anchoring inflation expectations. If we start to move that around, that does start to erode the credibility of the Federal Reserve, and they won't want to be doing that. Regarding to the situation in Middle East and also U.S. election, so what are the probability of the inflation in the U.S. until the end of 2024? So our expectation is that inflation in the U.S. will continue its disinflation trend. And if we look at the Fed's preferred measure of inflation, which is the core PCE, we do expect it to, to head you know, even further down. And what's been interesting with that preferred measure is that the core PCE started out the year around 2.9. Now it's sitting at around 2.6. So we do expect it to edge closer to that two, that, that magical 2% range by the end of the year, which is a positive thing. But as you mentioned, you know, geopolitical risks like the ongoing tensions in the Middle East alongside this uncertain US election outcome does certainly pose challenges and risks, not only to the growth outlook for the global economy, but also, of course, to the inflation outlook. Our, our baseline assumption doesn't have a, a flaring intentions that do lead um, that disinflation trend off course, but it's certainly a risk that we need to remain cognizant of because I think you know, the past couple of years has, have taught us anything. It's to really continue to expect the unexpected. So when do you think is the new normal interest rate um, after uh, the first cut or maybe in early 2025? So our expectation is that, you know, we'll see the 50 basis points worth of cuts this year and we'll see, you know, roughly around 100 basis points of cuts next year. And then, you know, the, the long term kind of equilibrium neutral level of the Fed fund rates will, will come back to around that 3% range. So we still do have some way to go in terms of the, the easing, um, you know, cycle. And one thing to keep in mind as well is that the Fed has made it very clear that they want to be patient when it comes to easing monetary policy settings. They don't want to move too soon and possibly risk inflation actually not getting back to that, that 2% figure. And so they will be patient. If we do see that inflation doesn't continue to, to cool as it did in the June quarter, but might you know deliver a few months of upside surprises, then I don't think the Fed will hesitate to uh, you know, move more slowly when it comes to its easing cycle. But, you know, the, the hope is that certainly we will see easier monetary policy settings from September this year and right through next year. 
And also, what are the risks if the Fed hold the benchmark in 5.5 um, slightly longer than expected to their economy? Yeah, so what we've seen is that, you know, the US economy is is dealing exceptionally well with this sustained high interest rate environment. But I think the longer that we do see uh, rates remaining high, the, the more likely it is that conditions will, you know, potentially go off, off balance quite quickly. And, you know, thinking here in particular about the labour market, you know, it's it's proved incredibly resilient, but it is starting to cool now. And if the Fed holds rates for too long at this high level, then the labour market could cool a lot quicker than expected. And we should never underestimate the importance of the labour market to the economy. So, for instance, if we do see the labour market cooling aggressively and we do see job shedding pick up, that'll lead household consumption, which is an important driver of the US economy, down a much darker path. I mean, it's it's one thing for households, for instance, to be experiencing higher lending rates, but it's quite another for them to be losing Losing their jobs as well. So it, it's really a, a, about a balancing act of trying to cool inflation at the same time as it's trying to manage the, the other factors in the economy that are only gradually cooling. But, you know, the Fed needs to make sure that they don't cool too quickly, because then that certainly does increase the risk of a recession. We saw how U.S. banking industry uh, trembling during the high interest era. And if they still hold uh, the higher interest for a bit longer, do you think it will continue or getting worse? So that's a good question. I mean, the the banking crisis that happened in the U.S., it, it's certainly a, a risk of, of reoccurrence, but it's certainly not a, a baseline situation, but it is certainly an example of what can happen and what can evolve quite quickly from a high interest rate environment. Because what we've seen is that, you know, that these high interest rates that we're experiencing in the US, but also globally, this is not a situation that we've experienced in such a long time. So, of course, it takes time for the economy and the financial system to adjust. And there's certain segments of the economy that's under more pressure than others. And so certainly the, the banking crisis is an example of an of uh, an area that you know wasn't adjusting well to this this high interest rates and so certainly it's an ongoing risk but it's certainly not an expectation that that sort of situation will re-emerge particularly given that you know it does feel like we're on the cusp of easier monetary policy settings which will certainly start to provide gradual relief to the financial system businesses and households as those rate cuts start to materialize